Nope. All right, we are live. Woohoo. Okay, fabulous. Hello, everyone. We are so excited today. Uh, Allison Luck Rorick is here, my one of my very first friends in my entire life, and we are still friends to this day, and I have utmost respect for her, is here to share knowledge about the brain and thinking and how it's healthy and correlates with what I have to share, dietitian Dorothy Doty, as some of you may know me as, um, with nutrition and how to make your brain healthier with what you eat, what to do to prevent stress eating, or when you want to stress eat, we all want to, so don't feel bad, don't self-deprecate, it's just part of life. And when I explain to you why we do it, I think you're going to feel better. So um, let's uh, let's tell a little bit about ourselves. Allison, go ahead and <laughs> share with us about you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be on this and doing this with Dodie. And I'm sorry, I'm going to try to call you Dorothy, but it's just not second. It's it's not, it's not going to work for me. <laughs> call me Dodie. It's fine. <laughs> I, it is totally fine. Yeah. And like, and like Dodie said, we've known each other for pretty much ever. Um, like first or second grade, maybe? Really? First, first grade? Class. Mrs. Albert's class. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I think there was the deadly... Um, fruit bar with the souring with the scouring powder on it in second grade remember that <laughs> <laughs> you remember that better than i do <laughs> <laughs> yes um so we've known each other for a really long time um i am several things i guess i mean as far as what i do for a living is kind of runs the gamut i've uh, i've been in social work for 25 years i think probably if i counted it all up I'm um, doing different things, case management. Um, I worked in adoption. Um, I was an adoption specialist, did adoption placements. Um, I worked with those um, in addiction, which was really amazing. Um, one of my favorite things. Um, and so, you know, and just um, basic life skills, those types of things in case management. Um, so I really enjoyed doing that. Um, but now I, uh, do a non-invasive type of therapy called the Safe and Sound Protocol um, through uh, a therapist's uh, office here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, um, and which is really cool. Uh, helps do the self-regulation in your body and things like that. Um, but I also own a business called Simple Chalk, which does, um, it's, a, it's a creativity, you get to make your own you get to make your own home decor and just kind of use that creativity um, around your house. So yeah, that's what I do. I love it. And I'm so excited to learn more about that yeah. and understand it better as yeah. well. And so I am dietitian Dorothy Doty and I <laughs> um, my passion is health, nutrition, fitness. Um, I mean, gosh, since since we've known each other in third grade when my mom taught me how to cook from the little 4-H club recipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've, I love to pretend I'm on a cooking show. And, um, and then, you know, as I got older, I wanted to know what nutrition does for our bodies. And some of you know, I got a little crazy with it. But thank goodness I figured it out <laughs> Michigan. And, you know, it was all in good intention. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of uh, black or white. Like, I am either all the way over here or over here. Right, right a little extreme but it's okay that's been part of my journey and so now i can help people i also learned i think i told you this allison i have the obesity gene so now i know why i was kind of you know oh i didn't know that oh yeah mm -hmm. okay okay yeah. wow i have a genetic testing that i do with my clients which is helps me able to pinpoint how to treat my patients better. And I I was my first patient, I was the guinea pig, and I found out I have the obesity gene. Really? So no wonder I wanted to eat all the time. And I was right. like, I'm so right. confused, what do I do? I wanna learn this, that's right. So it really was actually very um, peace to me when I found out that I had that. And then I understood why I was the way I was or why I am the way I am. And so I've, you know, and you still can work with that and be healthy. You know, mm -hmm. it might be a little more difficult, but you know, nothing is as good as when you have to work for it. So. <laughs> True statement. And, so and you know, healthy can be like a lot. I mean, you know, I think we tend to kind of look at healthy as like eating, right? Like that, 
we kind of pigeonhole it into that, but like overall health is like so much more. So, and you and I have talked a lot about that. Um, you know, it's our mental health. Um, it's, you know, our socialization, it's how we unwind. It's, you know, where we fill our own cup, but you and I, we've had many good conversations about that. Yep. And we're so. learning and growing mm -hmm. and we're excited to share with you what we've learned and grown from since 1994 in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we're excited to share where, where we've come and how we can help you. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Why, why don't we start this party off with you? And, oh, good. Uh, yeah, the the you know the little flyer I sent out. The first thing, what is the word? I can barely even say the it. circuitry of your brain. Yes, please. Yes, yes. So you guys, like the the brain is just such. Um, it's just so amazing. Um, I absolutely love the brain. I actually even have a picture of the brain behind me. Let's see if you can see it. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, it can be pretty. Look at that. Like, oops, sorry, there's my ring light. But the brain really controls so much of our health. Um, and so I wanted to kind of first, when we talk about creativity, I don't want people to think that you have to be like study the arts or any of those things to be creative. You know, I mean, like there's so many things in life that that really um, make up creativity. Um, and so it's not exclusive to those that may have an aptitude for art. Right. Um, I mean, like your mother is a wonderful artist and she always has been. And, you know, which is amazing. And I'm sure she uses art for a lot of different things, um, you know, maybe some stress relief, things like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of, I think it's kind of part of her DNA in some yeah. ways. It's part of how she, if I had to guess. Um, but yeah, so I don't, you know, I don't want to scare people off thinking that creativity is only for somebody that's a really great artist because it's not. Really what creativity is, is what we call it divergent thinking. Um, and I think of it, have, do you remember that movie Divergent? Did you ever watch that movie? There, there were books and then there was like, there were three movies and one of them was called Divergent. I um, didn't remember it. I didn't send mm -hmm. that book with movies. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it's, the Divergent thinking is really just thinking outside of the box. Anything that you think of, um, you know, that you use your brain in a different way to think outside the box. Um, so that's kind of what we're talking about with creativity and divergent thinking. So, um, and you use creativity in all, all careers, all aspects of your life. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, so the, I think we've kind of learned, I think most people have heard of like right brain and left brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of where it started emerging. Um, in, you know, common, you know, in common talk is, is right brain and left brain, right? So left brain is like your analytic and your logical side. Um, so I think, you know, some people say, you know, I'm very left brain thinker. I'm very logical. I, you know, I don't write my right brain doesn't work because the right brain is your emotional and your creativity and things like that. Um, so we used to think that like, it was kind of limited. So if you, you were a right brain thinker, you tended to be more creative. Mm -hmm. If you were a left brain thinker, you tended to be more like analytical and logical, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but now we've learned that they actually work in sync together during creativity, which is super cool. Um, there's like really three types, there's like three different connections that are made in our brain when we're, when we're, thinking outside the box. Okay. Um, so there's the executive um, network, which is kind of the central, I think it's like, just think of it as like you're the one that kind of tells you how to do everything executive, like, you know, you're the big boss, you know what I mean? That kind of makes those decisions. Um, and then you have the imagination network, which is really exactly what it it's it's also called the default mode network, but we're not gonna we're gonna go with imagination network because it's 
it's nice. Um, and then there's the salience network. Um, so those three networks in your brain work together during creativity. They're all like talking to each other and they're firing these awesome, like that your synapses are all firing and, and they're, you know, they're communicating back and forth and back and forth. Um, so it's like you're, they just, it's just not a black and white thing anymore. And we're learning more and more about it all the time um, of how our brain connects with other parts of our brain. Cause these are all kind of located, some of them are located in this, in some of the same areas of the brain. So it's a little easier for them to talk, but then there's some of those other ones that are at the back of the brain. Um, but the connections just, during creativity, they all work in sync together. And it's really cool. <laughs> it is cool. Yes, yes. So like your attention span is really, really short. Mm -hmm. Most humans are. I mean, that's just life in general. Mm -hmm. um, so the executive uh, network, it switches really rapidly with the imagination network. When you when you are um, when your attention span is done, the imagination network takes over. So it's um, huh. like your create your imagination network has like it's where you. We all heard of that term brainstorming. I think that kind of came out like when we were in high school, maybe right. Like we would have brainstorming and you'd throw all those words out. For brainstorming for the Olympics of the mind. Yes. We, <laughs> I think that was, so, but that was kind of a relatively new term for okay. us, yeah. you know, and now that's what they are, you know, this imagination network um, is responsible for those types of, um, those types of connections in your brain. So that's where daydreaming, that's what happens. That's where your imagination, I mean, you know, you can kind of, see the correlation with the name and what it kind of does. Um, yeah, so it's just uh, the connectivity when you create is amazing. Your brain just lights up. It is so interesting. Um, and I definitely can, you know, when we're talking about different areas of the brain and working together, like as a dietitian, that's a very left brain thing, you know. Correct very analytical, which is so weird because I never thought of myself like that. Right. Um, <laughs> oh, math, Mrs. Foster, oh. not my favorite. No, um, that was a hard class. I like Mrs. Foster, but that was a hard class. Me, me. So, <laughs> I, so, I, so she walked around the hallways really fast. Yes, she did. Like the road runner sound. Um, but I, it's so funny to me, but I love like counting carbohydrate grams and calories and all that. So it's a very left brain thing I do, but I would say I definitely have that artistic side of me from, you know, my mother, mm -hmm. um, who is she, you know, she's got the analytical side as well. Um, I can feel when I'm doing, um, those two together, I feel on fire. Mm -hmm. And some of my greatest ideas have come when I'm using those two, for example, it's right here. I see it on the floor. Hold on. Let me grab yep. it. Um, like one of my things is, you know, like counting what we eat. Um, one time I was playing Monopoly and I'm like, you know, this is kind of like uh, food. Like we only have so much we can eat. It's like money. Mm -hmm. You know, so much money on Monopoly to buy the. So I'm like, let's make this diet that where I give them an allowance. And so I made all these little dollars. So this is my creativity. That's your divergent thinking. Like you thought outside the box. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. It's exactly it. It is kind of cool because, um, you know, it's definitely putting the artistic side to nutrition. Um, and then, and but I feel so amazing when I'm using that. Um, together. And I have to say also, I signed up for oil painting and acrylic class in like 2008, I think it was, mm -hmm. at a community college. Mm -hmm. And um, I have one of my paintings right behind us. Um, and I would wear a ber beret to class, like to get into the mood. And, Ooh la la. <laughs> and um, I swear, you know, just tapping into that side, I haven't done since Mr. Oakley's class at senior year in high school. 
um, because I didn't take any art in college. I like I felt like a different part of my brain working, like steam was coming out of my ears. It was really it was felt good. Well, you know what that is called too, and that is a super important part of creating. It's called flow, F L O W, and that's you know we get into that flow when we're super involved in something and it's almost like we're like there's nothing else going on but that and us we kind of block that out and allow those things to happen um so that you definitely reached what we call flow in that cool. <laughs> yeah yeah and that's that's one of the most important things with creating as well is you know getting into the the flow yeah. of it and allowing yourself to just think things that I mean, who knows what you could, that, that, and I think that's the beauty of, that's what I like doing when I'm teaching people how, you know, when I'm doing workshops or whatever with the, with the home design stuff, um, like people don't think they, when they come out with this product that, or this thing that's beautiful, it's such a gratifying experience. And I, you know, I like teaching people that, you know, you can get into this, even if you don't think that you're that you're good at it. Right. It doesn't have to be good. First of all, who cares? It's yours, you know, but when you get into that flow, right. it's amazing. Right. For sure. I mean, this certainly isn't a Degas by any way, but, no, but it's, of, it. it's of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah. And, and I would be too. I mean, that's exactly what, that's exactly what I, you know, I'm kind of getting at with creativity is that, you know, we, you mentioned cooking, you're, you know, you like cooking mm -hmm. yep. and that I, yeah, not, not this girl, but you do. <laughs> I bet you get into a flow with that quite a, quite frequently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and that flow is healthy. Yes. Very. Yeah, absolutely healthy. Um, because it's, it is like where that's how you get immersed in something. Um, and that, of course, when you're immersed in something, what goes away? Everything Absolutely. else, right? Mm -hmm. Like everything, you're kind of in this this space where you can just be. Um, and, it, and getting into that flow um, only makes those connections happen more frequently. And you're just, you know, building those things up. So, yeah, flow is super healthy. Don't be sad if you can't get into the flow, right? You know, because like sometimes that just doesn't happen. Um right. But when it does, it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Right. And I am imagining it, it releases endorphins and feels mm -hmm. good. Bones. Yeah. Yeah. And it does. It, it like reduces anxiety, uh, boosts your mood. Um, it's, it actually slows your heart rate when you get into flow. When, that, when you're in, immersed in something, those are all things that happen when you're creating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, and when you're doing those repetitive motions um, of creating, um, that is also good for your brain. It's also can that those repetitive things, whether it's knitting, you know, mm -hmm. um, cooking, we, you have a lot of repetitive motions, chopping, those types of things, um, painting, all of those things, just making um, your body work in ways that aren't necessarily what you do all the time. Um, can activate flow um, and create a really great result. So, yeah. and this is so good for <coughs> health. And, and, you know, it is good to move the body once in a while, but it doesn't always have to be that, like walking, running, dancing. Um, but it can be other things like gardening. I have a client that loves to garden. And I'm like, gosh, if that's your thing, is I don't have a green thumb, but please go garden. You know, that's a repetitive. Right to um, digging in the sand. So, mm -hmm. you know, these are all healthy ways and let's turn it to stress eating. So these, you know, stress eating, stress drinking, um, we all have done it, do it, etc. And so finding an outlet to do and not always go to the eating, drinking is a great idea. Um, for example, for me, um, I 
you know, when the Tigers are on, I'm ready. As you see, they're playing right now, actually. <laughs> um, I watch every game, but I work out while I watch them. Otherwise, they'd be sitting here eating and drinking or doing something like that. So I'm right. like, I want to be, you know, I want to be doing something, too. I Not the worst than being a couch potato watching a bunch of athletes. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have this little... Thing. And talk about thinking outside the box. I made up this um, workout during the quarantine because we couldn't go to the gym and baseball wasn't on for a long time. But finally, when it was and the gyms were still closed here, mm -hmm. um, I made up this workout. Every time Miguel Cabrera swings, I swing with my weights. Or something. I, like, I know it sounds crazy. Okay? No, it, it, <laughs> it sounds it sounds amazing, actually. Like, I love I love everything about that because. You know, like you might as well make it fun. And, you know, I mean, we do it with drinking games. Why don't we do it with healthy things? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, per, I now I, I don't go to the gym unless I have clients. I just do this. And my wife is like, this is the longest workout ever. Baseball is like three hours. <laughs> Poor JP. <laughs> but it's like, it was COVID made us think outside the box and, that's something I did is instead of always in there and drinking or eating, you mm -hmm. know, I, I wasn't perfect, but that's something I learned. I think if you're like me, I have to know why, why am I doing this? Why do I do this? Why, you know, why do I think this way? Why am I stress eating? So if this helps, you know, and not self deprecate and understand it's human. Um, why we stress eat, it goes all the way back to the cave people days, okay? So when we are in a fight or flight moment, our metabolism does go up because we got we to gotta fight or flight. We got to either run or we got to fight. And so our metabolism does go up and that can make for the need to eat. Um, we need energy to jump, to punch, to run. So mm -hmm. that is why it's human nature. The difference between us in the 2022 and the cave people um, was that they were actually, you know, their stressors were running from dinosaurs or running from, right. we are <laughs> de dealing with stress on um, Instagram, <laughs> you know, and we're sitting here. Exactly. Yeah, we, it's, it's definitely... <laughs> Well, and it's funny that you mentioned that fight or flight aspect, because that's literally what I work on in the safe and sound protocol is that moment when you are in that fight or flight, you can either go all the way down. We call it dorsal vagal, which is down where you basically shut down. You disassociate, you sleep, you do, you know, you break down, your body breaks down, your mind breaks down. But if you're in that middle ground of fight or flight, we want you to get up to va to um, the highest level, which is, I think most people know it as homeostasis, um, mm -hmm. but it's the feeling of safety and security. So you don't have to stress eat. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's your body's way of, it's its natural cues telling you, um, you know, our metabolism is up, but we don't need to take in all that um, when we are in this day and age and we don't move for sedentary people. Right. It's just, and again, that's not our fault. It's just the way, the way the world is, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. our, our nation is and our society. And I mean, even yeah. the way Orange County is laid out, it's not feasible to walk. You know, in New York, they're walking around and I love it. But, you know, for a while, I was trying to walk like half of my trips here. And it was like my whole day was walking. <laughs> it's like I'm getting nothing done. OK, I, so that's so interesting to me because I would think I mean, and this is a generalization, clearly. But like, you know, you're in a climate where you and we were just talking about this earlier. It's gorgeous. I mean, mostly beautiful mid 70 days, you know, certainly different than here in Indiana and to not make a city um walkable is funny like that in that type of a atmosphere definitely not no not orange county for sure hmm. i like maybe a little more yeah. it, it, orange county is a bunch of suburbs you know R well true yeah mm -hmm. i don't know that much about <laughs> i've only been to la once isn't that sad 
no, that might be all you want. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always my favorite place to go to. Um, but yeah, like if I want to go to Angel Game tomorrow, I'd have to leave now, you know, I'm just, <laughs> be a ways to go. <laughs> it feels dangerous too, <laughs> driving, walking down the freeway. Probably, um, yes. But I, so my suggestion in my newsletter, and if you want um, access to my newsletter, I publish it once a month. Um, you know, I suggest finding something that you love to do instead of stress eat and, you know, whatever that may be. It, and, and, you know, it's not wrong, whatever you choose. You know, Allison has some great artistic ideas. I, um, you know, have my, you know, watching the game and athletic ideas that I like to do that keeps me happy. Um, the knitting is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things to do other than things that are debilitating to your body. It's not bad to eat. It's just bad when we're just doing it and we're not really hungry. You know, um, it's not bad to have like 12 potato chips. It's, it's especially for hungry and craving it um, a serving, but it's, it's not good when we're just going to town, just out of emotion, out of stress. That's not a healthy behavior. And I think a lot of, I think stress and emotion are, are like intertwined, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it's just, it's hard to, it's hard to separate them sometimes. So yeah, finding a healthier outlet for that relieves the stress um, is, is paramount to mm -hmm. overall health, I think, mm -hmm. um, because stress, it wears your body out. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it just wears you out. It makes you, it makes you just, I don't know. I think we're just too stressed here in the United States. I yeah. think we just, I think we really have our priorities skewed. Um, mm -hmm. But that's just my opinion. Um, you know, we do a lot of things to ourselves and there's a lot of expectations. Um, it's just, uh, yeah. Find something that you like to do mm -hmm. that is, you know, a little bit different than what you do for a job maybe, or, or even it was like, seriously, like I love my job because I get to create pretty much all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I find it hard to create on demand though. So that's a little, <laughs> I'm working on that. <laughs> yeah. Those creative moments come at different times. So, yeah. And something I would like to say, if, um, you know, if the stress eating, if, if you just can't push it aside, um, and I know that usually once a month I have this. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, um, you know, where I'm just like, I just, you know, want to crunch on something. Right. So I, there are foods that you can choose that aren't going to debilitate you as much um, that you can go to, on, to town on. Um, you know, vegetables, you know, baby carrots, cucumbers, um, make kale chips. I have a great kale chip recipe. Mm. Um, and heaven forbid, you know, throw a little salt on there, garlic salt or something <laughs> seasoning. That's fine because you're going to be getting the salt in the chips anyway. So you're just sure. taking a more nutritious snack with not so much calories, um, high carbohydrate and just giving it a little seasoning um to give you that uh, that flavor that you might be craving um one of my favorites when i'm having that like i want to do something it's uh i like peanuts you know i sit here <laughs> and watch baseball and shut and then i'm having to do something with my hands it's a great idea and pistachios you uh -huh. know that keeps you busy yes uh, and then if you are really craving the more rich carbohydrate food, the best one to go to town on is um, air pop popcorn. Because you can have three cups of popcorn, which is equivalent to one serving of carbohydrate, like one slice of bread or half cup of pasta or third cup of rice. So three cups of popcorn, that's a lot. Yeah. You know, and you can season it like with the garlic salt or you know spray it with some butter flavor Pam, or I can't believe it's not butter and make it taste like that movie stuff. That's a good one. If you need to munch, munch, munch. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good, that's a good idea. It's a very good idea. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tend to, yeah, I, it's funny. Cause I don't, I don't, 
I tend to go more towards the knitting or something to do with my hands, paint, you know, I, I don't know, create something. And it's funny that I don't go towards the food. I but think I know that about you. You're yeah, but it's good that. to know. It's good to know because sometimes I do. Yeah, I think we all go through those, uh, you know, those moments of just craving. Cravings are hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to have it, you know, once in a while, but you, you got to figure out why, you know, and if it is a stress thing, you know, and I mean, same with alcohol and drinking, like, why are you drinking? You know, is it to celebrate something or are we going to town to relieve some stress? Like we need to have our livers. They are important. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that we, you know, are not right. food, alcohol, all of, all of these things we need to, um, be moving more um, in whatever way that is in artistic creativity, you know, athletic, whatever. Cooking, cooking whatever your jam is, mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, you know, it creativity also, I'm trying to think you, you mentioned dopamine, which is like, like that's cheap. Oh, that's a, that's a cheap high y'all. Really? Yeah, totally. You can do that yourself. <laughs> you mm -hmm. don't have to go, drink or you don't have to go use or whatever it is, you know, do dopamine is free. Um, <laughs> some of us don't create as enough of it, but that's, you know, that's, that is also, you know, something to pay attention to, but you know, you have all these great things and, and there are certainly foods too. I feel like I remember cashews being one that was really good. Um, that kind of mimicked, I could be wrong. The dopamine, release the research that <laughs> sounds um sounds i could be totally wrong <laughs> well there's a lot of hearsay out there with nutrition but you are absolutely right with nuts and this was in my newsletter as well about foods that mm -hmm. are high in the omega-3s and the research on how healthy they are for our brain um, they did a study at the Ohio State University, um, not our favorite college, but they did yeah. come out with this good study <laughs> that um, they, they had rats, two sets of rats. And these rats, one set, they fed a lot of processed food too, like think chips, pretzels, frozen pizzas, packaged foods. And then the other rats were given uh, more wholesome foods. And um, then they had another set of rats where they give them the junk food and omega-3 supplements and um the rats that were fed nothing but junk food when they put them in the maze they were not able to find their way as much and they were not also um able to remember danger cues um like the rats that were eating wholesome food are the omega-3s uh -huh. they weren't um, taking care of the brain right mm -hmm. so and so that shows that even wholesome food is not only for our heart health, for our lean health, um, blood health, bone health, muscle health, it's also for our brain health. And um, some of the best foods, salmon, chia seeds, eggs have um, omega-3s in it because of the flax seed that the chickens eat. Oh. So that goes into the egg. They're not naturally as high in omega-3s, but the chickens eat the flax and flax seed have high. So and we all, you know, a lot of us like eggs, mm -hmm. um, not everyone. Um, mackerel is very high, but you have to watch your mercury content with that fish. Um, holy mackerel, you know, like <laughs> that. cod liver oil, herring, um, caviar, sardines, soybeans. I recommend no more than one serving a day of like tofu, soy. If you have cancer in your family, just one a day is fine. It's, you know, you have to totally not have it. Um, anchovies and oysters. Those are some of your highest. Wow. Omega threes. Mm -hmm. and, and excuse me, walnuts, nuts. Walnuts. Nuts in general. Yeah. Like, are there better ones for omega three? Walnuts are the best. They're the best. Walnuts have the perfect ratio of omega three to omega six. Isn't that crazy? Mm hmm They're really, yeah. So, you know, adding your, you know, half cup of oatmeal in the morning, maybe a cup if you're a man, 
a half mm -hmm. cup for the ladies and you know um because we're usually smaller with less muscle um so it's maybe a tablespoon or two tablespoons of walnuts that would be good we're supposed to have about two servings a week you know and that's not much just four ounce pieces of salmon or you know two tablespoons of walnuts you know that's a serving right there so mm -hmm. it's easy then Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's super, it's super important to keep your brain healthy. Um, I mean, you know, <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm thinking the processed foods kind of sound like my grocery list from last week, like the frozen pizza. I may have eaten a frozen pizza last night. It's okay once in a while. I, I didn't say it was once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> like once a week, a treat. Yeah. Um, it makes a homemade pizza. Mm -hmm. I mean, True. Yes. I don't know why, but my boyfriend wouldn't eat my latest homemade pizza. He was scared of it. But <laughs> yes, really? <I'm> <laughs> what do you have on it? Goodness. <laughs> well, I, I am the queen of substitution sometimes. So, maybe that's what so you weren't really sure he wasn't positive what he was going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I, I do get very creative. Very creative with my cooking. There you go. Sometimes see? too creative. <laughs> Sometimes too creative. Well, you, you absolutely, every time you post something on Facebook, I'm like, that looks delicious. Oh, I wish you. somebody would come make that for me because I, yeah. Thank so, you. yeah. If, if, here's my theory. If, when I'm rich, <laughs> it's you never going to happen. Are already rich. Yeah. Well, right. Yes. But money wise, when I'm rich, mm -hmm. I'm going to have somebody come cook healthy for me because it's very overwhelming for me. I will. <laughs> okay, cool. You can be my cook. <laughs> I mean, I swear I am the queen of like, you know, I don't feel like going to the grocery store. I'll just take a recipe and say it calls for chia seeds. I don't have chia seeds. I'll throw in flax seeds if I have them or I'll throw in nuts. Like I try to find the closest thing and I then I make it my own recipe. Nice. But like I said, sometimes it's gotten a little too creative. Like I think <laughs> one time I made um, meatloaf for my poor ex-husband out of oatmeal or something. And oh, no bless his heart. anymore. <laughs> With ketchup. That was it. <laughs> Oatmeal with ketchup. <laughs> and, and I made it the ketchup in a Z because his last name right, was right. Z. <laughs> and I was like, look. And he, and was, he like, was like, I'm going to Taco Bell. And I got really mad. <laughs> <laughs> so I've grown up since then. <laughs> I don't Good. get as much crazy. I don't get as crazy. But I just, you know, I, I do get creative and um cooking you can do it sports athletic you know exercise and with your creativity um tell me about uh do is there anything that where we can dip get dip into like an artistic um way with your simple chalk um yeah absolutely i i am actually launching a um it's called a retreat in a box OK, so it's um, three different projects and we get together online and we take a day or, you know, two or three hours, whatever it takes to just do these projects together um, from wherever. Y'all can do them from California while I'm in Indiana. Um, so, yeah, like that is how I'm kind of trying to, you know, we kind of use it as a retreat time, a time that's just for you. Um, you block off that time a couple hours of your time and just create and be with gr a group of people that are doing the same thing. So when is the next one? Um, I'm launching the box for the, the box for summer is launching tomorrow. Okay. Um, but so there'll be two weeks, there'll be like a two week ordering period. Um, okay. So that, you know, the people can, that people can order it and then um, we'll get the bot, we'll get all the projects to them. And I think um, the, the actual online group um, get together is the end of July. And I apologize, but there's vacations happening and all these things, you know, it's getting kind of crazy, but the, the actual group will meet at the end of July um, and do the project together. I think so. that's wonderful. I didn't mean, yeah. you but on vacation too. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Well, I was thinking, you know, we're uh, Dodie and I. I mean, we're our, our vacation is up to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and and Dodie and I were fortunate growing up that her dad was from that area of Iron Mountain, Iron River, mm-hmm. up in the Upper Peninsula, and my grandfather was from Iron River. So as kids, we actually one time our families. <laughs> coordinated this vacation. I mean, we just happened to be at this resort that we both go to at the same time. And it was like the best week ever, like to spend (laughs) a week in the upper peninsula with your best friend was amazing. That was like fifth or sixth grade, maybe. Do you remember that? And then then last summer, her parents were right next to me in in the next cabin over. So um, I would certainly do it while I was on vacation, but I don't know if I'll have any internet. That's the, oh, that's true. That's the tricky part with being up in the kind of, yeah, in the boonies. Yeah. So um, I toyed with the idea of doing that, but I didn't want to, you know, get this whole class together and not be able to actually help anybody with the process. So, it's body. Yeah. So, it's body. You have to go in the, in the, where the book was. Right. And I didn't really want to do that. <laughs> no, it's spotty too. Yeah, I know. So, which is nice because you can kind of yes, like, like you don't have to talk to anybody for the week. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't make for a good um, live. <laughs> if you need right. internet, it doesn't. So um, I think the, I think the 24th um, of July is a Saturday. And I think that's the date. Um, that we're going to be doing the um, actual live, you know, bring all your stuff. We'll have a group. We'll go live, you know, live together and just kind of create together and have like a, just kind of a, you know, couple hours to ourselves where that's what we're doing and enjoying and, um, you know, creating projects. And um, the good thing is, is that I've, I, this, this box, so this little retreat in a box is um, it's $99 for three projects. Okay. Everything you're gonna need. So yeah, so um, it's not super expensive, um, which is good because I don't, you know, I want people to be able to do it. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, July 24th. Do you know what day that is? It is a. Let me look at my calendar. I believe it's a Saturday. So, but I am okay. open. And I believe it's a Saturday. Um, I I lied. That's a Sunday. So okay. maybe the 23rd is what we were okay. thinking. Yes, I have it on the 23rd. Okay, 23rd. Um, 23rd. So we'll coordinate it. I'm thinking probably um, around 1230 for those of you Pacific time, if any of your, um, you know, your your clients want to, you know, join and do this, um, it'd be like 1230 uh, Pacific time. And that'd be 230 our time. Yeah. Just kind of a creative little afternoon. I think it I sounds fun. It. Yeah. It, it sounds lovely. I'm excited. Yeah. Mark that in my calendar for sure. Can you, um, write, <coughs> do you know how to write here so that people can know how to, um, um, where to find your site? Let's see. Can I write in the comments or is there somewhere else that write I can? In the write? comments. See if you can write there. I don't think. I don't have a bot, like it's just people's comments. I don't have a spot to actually write it. Like I don't have, I can't type it. There's no box to type it in. Does that make sense? Yes, I'm going to write this. So this is your Facebook page. Allison, um, wait a minute. Simple Chalk is the Facebook page that, yep, that's the private, that's my business group. So it's a VIP group. That's kind of where I do live projects once a week and I go, you know, just kind of where I do all my art stuff. Um, So if any of you are looking to join um, that, uh, that's where the fun happens usually all the time. So it's called Simple Chalk. Okay, Simple Chalk. So that's simple. So Simple Chalk. And then like, do we all see each other while we're doing the art? Well, yes, because I am, um, we're, I'm working on getting that, like a, like what we're doing here. Um, we can do like a zoom type of thing. Cool. We can do it over zoom. So yeah. So we can interact, we can chat, we can, you know, listen to music. I don't care what we do. Like we can live it up. I really don't care. It's, it's, it's everybody's retreat. So yeah. I just listen you know. to little kids on the block. Uh, of course we are. 
<laughs> why would we not? Like that was a given. <laughs> um, yeah. So join us for that for sure. Yeah. I'm really yeah. excited. I'm going to tell my mom, my mom, speaking of art and vacation, um, she's so cute. She does a little art hour every day of the vacay up in lack of seasons for the kids. And they does make she really every day. She has a like, one o'clock they all meet at our cabin and we do like I don't know oh, the art project art designs yeah or something yeah it's yeah well cool. and you know even the, I forgot to mention this so we kind of we kind of do the same we have like coloring hour in mm -hmm. like those coloring books that are for adults yes so we'll all just sit around the table and color yeah and that is yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't it's not hard just grab yourself some crayons mm -hmm. and a you know a coloring book. It doesn't have to be a, a coloring book for adults. It's just as much fun to color in the old school, you know, the kids coloring books. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I do that a lot um, while I'm you know listening. Sometimes mm -hmm. stress. I get stressed when, as a social worker, mm -hmm. um, you take in a lot of information that you don't necessarily. Um, you know, that's not great. I mean, it can affect your mental health. So I did, I used to color while I was um, listening to some of my clients because I needed to be as stress-free as I could to help them. So yeah, I use that a lot. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've seen people do that in some of the meetings I go to too. Mm -hmm. Or yes. the fidget pops. Those things are, have you seen those? The uh -huh. it's like the never ending bubble wrap, which is amazing. You know, they pop one side and then you flip it over and you pop the other side. Oh, it's, it's amazing. Those are great. Mm -hmm. They're great for anxiety as well. So yeah. That is good. Yeah, so well, thank you for all this knowledge. Well, thanks for having me. This was fun. I'm super glad that we did this. Me too. Yes. yes. So dear to my heart. Um, I think about you a lot. <laughs> I, I do, me too. Me too. And I like, I hope that you all got to watch that awesome video of us. <laughs> of all our cool pictures. There's so many more <laughs> that I did not put in there. Just so you know. <laughs> you know which one I found? The Brian Boitano one with the Huff Underground Service t-shirt. I'll send that to you. During the Olympics last winter, I saw him on an interview and I took a picture and I was looking all over for that picture so I could put him up on Facebook and say, I have, you. I have it. I have it. I have it. I will send it to you. It is amazing. On your bedroom door. Oh, I was on your closet door. That was one of my celebrity crushes. You know, I go through them. Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. You do. You had lots of celebrity crushes when we were young. You yeah, I have one still till this day. Oh, well, <laughs> do you? Yes. <laughs> well, I think we all do. I think we all yeah. do. It's okay. Yeah. It's the hall pass. It's exactly <laughs> like I'm never going to meet this person. I think my celebrity crush right now is Jason Bateman. Okay. With that show. What is that show? Ozark is amazing. Mm -hmm. But his personality is really good. He's very sarcastic and dry, which, you know, I kind of dig that so it was a hand family ties back yes. in the day yeah yes mm -hmm. yeah yep he's my crush, he's my well, crush right okay. now. mine is a similar like from the old school um he reminds me of ralph macchio the karate kid which was my first crush in my life um christian yelich he's a milwaukee brewer i know this because you know i watch my dad's team and mm -hmm. he's celebrity crush he took nice. Justin Verlander's place and <laughs> oh he took his your, the celebrity baseball crush place of Justin Verlander celebrity, yeah crush in general nice. so <laughs> hey whatever Justin Verlander's married now he's yeah it was but um yeah and I JP gets a little you know jealous but he's got his it's Holly Berry of, so. of course well, like it's yeah like it's never gonna happen I don't blame I mean, him she's hot I, she is very hot I don't blame him either. She's, she's, I may have a crush on her. She's that hot. <laughs> so, no, yeah, I don't blame him. I do not blame him. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, this was super fun. Um, Thank you. Yes. So let's all plan on the 23rd of July. Yes. Let's plan on it. And um, I will get the, um, I will get the link up. 
um, as far as what you need to do to let me know you want to order a box, um, a retreat box, and we can, you know, go from there. Your people just get on Simple Chalk. Join the club. And, it's fun. And, yes. And then for, um, let's do that. Let's take our health up a notch with doing creative things like that. Let's be more active. Let's, let's, you know, be the trendsetters to, you know, get our society moving into a healthier mindset and physically. Um, and then also I take insurance now, so you don't have to pay anymore. Um, insurance covers overweight, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, eating disorders, kidney disease. So 60% of us are overweight. Yay. That's the good news. We get free counseling. So, <laughs> so that's awesome that, mm -hmm. and that's no, that's no small feat to get. I mean, getting, getting uh, paneled by an insurance company is quite the process or getting to be able to accept insurance. So congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> that's great for you and your clients. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, it was JP's idea and I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to deal with all that. And then it took me like five minutes. I was like, you're right. Cause I don't like charging people in this way more people can see me and I don't mm -hmm. have to charge them. I just charge the insurance company. I have no problem doing that. Um, and so, you know, more people can afford it and we need to make our, we need to make our country healthy. So that's. Well, I we need to make it affordable. We need to make those things accessible to people and that often, you know, money is an issue. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but money is, is an issue. Um, and so that's amazing that you can take insurance now. Cause that's, you know, we, we all, we all need all the help we can get. Right. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and you might even, you know, I met a guy yesterday at Starbucks, like I pretty much eat plant-based, but I still got all this and, you know, and then, right. You know, showing me the buffalo wings they had last night and the burrito and the smoothie. And, you know, there's a lot of times we think what we're eating is, I mean, it is all healthy. It's just, you know, it is. Well, the stuff. amount. Yeah, I'm sure the amount of, of, you know, the actual quantity that you eat is, is a huge issue too, you know, that that we all deal with. <laughs> yep. Correlated with how much you move. And so mm -hmm. believe me, I eat burritos, I eat smoothies, all these things. It's just, you got to balance it. And it mm -hmm. is a science. So, you know, we all eat that there it's a specialty knowledge. So I love helping people with that nutrition for the number four men, nutrition for ladies.com. And, um, you know, ask me questions. I can um, help you with insurance, especially Californians, Arizona, Colorado people, um, Michigan. It's tough, unfortunately, but, you know, I'm help, still happy to help. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. Um, and yeah, we'll have to do this again. Yes, let's do it. But let's um, definitely yeah. plan on July 23rd. July 23rd, we will be together creating our brains out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I put it in my calendar. Cool. cool. And um, we'll see then. If you have any questions on how to find Simple Chalk, please contact me on however mode you want to contact me. And um, we look forward to seeing you then. Thanks, you guys. Take care, everyone. Thank you Bye. so much for your Saturday with us. Goodbye.